Who's there? Blessings to you. This is a marvelous city to walk, isn't it? To look down on the crater from the walls, or up at our buildings from the aisles. Truly breathtaking. The art of rhetoric is essential for any Templar to master. And of course, I excel at it more than anyone. But such knowledge is better shared, agreed? This city will be a beacon to all of the other races, to let them know of our artistry, our resilience, and our mastery of knowledge and magic. I sponsor many of the scholars of physiology and humoral applications in the Basilica Nostra. With all that's happening, the world will need healers. The Templars are the leaders of the Gnomish people. We are many, and sometimes at odds. But we have the goodness of our people, all peoples, in our heart. Be well. Blessings to you. The Alpha have a grand city in Rathir, but stone for stone, I would rate Adessa among the greatest cities in the world. Or I will when it's complete. I took up learning it as a hobby. Next thing you know, I'm good enough to share the knowledge. <laughs> All for the right price, of course. I perform a number of odd jobs and studies on behalf of the researchers in the laboratories. Always work to be done. The walls are home to the assistants, the mundane researchers like myself. We strive to ensure that the institutions of the Isles are optimally supported. This city will stand for centuries. You can tell that already just by standing here. History is being made as we speak. Farewell. What's needed? What can I do for you?
blessings to you. You, you're alive. What an unexpected and quite unfortunate turn of events. For starters, they expected you to be rotting in a sandy ditch somewhere. Supper for the carrion birds. Understand, you and I are alike. All we both want is to see this business reach its end. Ha! The white palm are hardly thugs. Simply finding them cost me a small fortune when I expect to be reimbursed with this failure. Or what? You'll slaughter me in a murderous rage? Typical. Your kind is as predictable as it is stupid. I'm afraid you'll find me quite hard to kill. Unfortunately, I cannot say the same for you. Attack me in this city, and I won't just have you clapped in irons. No. I'll hand you over to the scholars in the Basilica for research. A long career supporting vivification research has left me with certain advantages. You could say I'm more resilient than most of your enemies. I'll admit I did not see you and Hughes are lying to blackmail me. His conscience was always his biggest liability. Then Trinio will take over a search on the well. He has no such weaknesses. Perhaps I'll even give him your corpse to examine. After all, you met your first death as his assistant. It would be a reunion. Of course. And it's such a pity you'll never find out.
Well, if setting fire to the Livrarium and hiring assassins is not an admission of guilt on Octien's part, I certainly don't know what is. It is clear that we Templars must make him assume responsibility for his actions, overt as well as hidden. Even though you went against my explicit instruction, you were effective. You have my respect. Should he survive the wounds earned in battle, I should think so. To that effect, I have ordered a moratorium on all of his current studies and projects. Or, perhaps, save this mysterious well of souls. That one will take some deliberation, considering its various ethical and societal ramifications. Regardless, Gnome Society is in your debt, and we always pay what is owed. Ventrinio Desolini. One name I never expected to be brought into this business. It seems he has escaped the gallows yet again. I believe your friend Scholar Hughes may be able to help. While you were here, my people found him salvaging the tomes Octien attempted to burn. Now, you must excuse me. A Templar has fallen from power, and Odessa's political buzzards are circling. Yes? Quick. It was my mistake to assume that Octien would go quietly, or that he would leave evidence behind. Such a waste. Some of those books he burned were centuries old, but luckily for us, I was able to salvage some from the flames. Oh, great many prizes. Treatises on the nature of death, tables upon tables of autopsy analyses, but only one item of true value. Octien's diary. Based off of what I've read in these pages, Ventrinia has been working on an island off of Pluricon. True, but this young lady says she has a way to fix that. I'm not sure how you know Aelin Cher, but she seems quite eager to speak with you. When you meet Ventrinia, be careful. His genius comes at the price of his sanity. He may want to kill you the second time around for good measure. If he hasn't yet gotten completely mad, then Trinio should be able to get you into Alabastra. Unfortunately, research on the Well of Souls will be put on hold. Octien organized it in secret, and the other Templars will want to learn all they can of it. But I do not think I'll be idle in the meantime. With Octien out of the way, there will be in need of a new Templar in Edessa. You carry a grave responsibility now, my friend. Ah, Adessa, the great gnomish city-state. Knowledge, reason, and logic rule there, as do bureaucracy and intrigue. A clever gnome can go far in that city, and a wise gnome goes far away from it. I am Fomorous Hughes, scholar of vivification prime circle, the Well of Souls was my life's work. The Templars rule from the Forum, and you can't get a thing done in the city without the sponsorship of one of them. They can be powerful allies, but the one thing you don't want to do is get on their bad side. My old colleague, Ventrinio Desilini. For a time we worked together under Templar Octien. He was a brilliant scholar, but a terrible person. Octien's journal shows that Ventrinio's assistant died during an important mission into the heart of Alabastra. I don't know how to say this, but the date of the assistant's death is shortly before you came back to life.
glad you decided to show. Can't say I wasn't antsy with all these squirrel-headed gnomes staring me down crosswise. But let's be quick-like about this. Before you go into the vault, I've got to run you down on what's needed. Been a bit since we crossed paths, hasn't it? Well, after I got free of that curse, I joined up with Grimm's crew. Ain't been some lily liver after what happened at Rhythen. I'm stronger now, faster. Better thief than I ever could have been under the Hierophant. Lot of followers with their heads in the clouds. They're not seeing things because they're too busy kissing the Hierophant's dung-covered boots. I'll show them. They say this place is the bright center of knowledge, but there's a coldness beneath these floors. Like something hidden. Egg-eating, swill-sucking, take it in the eye for a side, twig-wrenching traitor. Stew-brained wretch. Send me to die, will he? He'll get his. I swear it. Grim learned that the gnomes enchanted the missives with a spell that lets them know its location at all times. Trilgarin came up with a solution. The Shroud of Omission. Cover the book in this shroud and the gnomes will forget it exists. Now, are you ready? This is a one-way trip. Once you're in, you'll have to find your own way out. Some old book. Don't look at me for what's in it. The value that those cursed scullions place in the missives is what concerns Grim and I. I don't know if Krilgarin made the bloody thing or stole it, but she said it's one of a kind. Place an object under the shroud and all the world forgets it existed. Seems useless, eh? But in the right moment, it's a damned waggish bedlam. Through this floor grate here. You'll have to do what you can to keep your bearings. It's a maze down there. And be careful. They might be pint pots, but these gnomes will become vicious if they get wise to you. Right, you'd better go. Be quick about it. I'll distract them. Let's do this.